welcome back to Life with Loki and today is actually a collaboration with Danny from Mrs. Danny O after her disappointing spill on receiving her first Hermes Birkin from the online reseller Finkel Puff. Danny and I have decided to work on this collaboration together to give our reviews and thoughts as previous customers of Finkel Puff, our expectations versus reality and lessons learned. So I think this, this video will definitely help many of you out there looking for your first Hermes bag sourced from an established online reseller and help you out with a few pointers before securing your bag. Well, if you're new here and if we haven't met, my name is Loki and welcome to my safe space where I enjoy talking and sharing about luxury handbags, in particular Hermes. I shop from vintage to pre-loved and brand new and of course talk about my reviews and experiences on my channel. So if you're into content like this then why not make my day and click that subscribe button to join my family. Without further ado, let's get started into the review of Finkel Puff. Well, so if you have missed Danny's unboxing of her first last, which is her first Birkin purchase from Finkel Puff, well she was quite disappointed with the colour the safe condition of the bag and it, did, it didn't come in an Hermes box nor any receipts. So as a previous customer of Finkel Puff, I too had my fair share of experience which will be helpful for some of you thinking of going that route. Well, Finkel Puff is actually an online reseller platform on Instagram who ships worldwide but is based in Singapore. The owner staff does not have a brick and mortar shop front but since I'm also based in Singapore I will give you my spiel on the local buying process which hopefully Danny will cover the buying process as an overseas customer. So the bags available for sale are up on Finkel Puff's Instagram site where it will state the bulk of the information about the bag however you are encouraged to ask more questions about the bag on WhatsApp chat where the owner staff will send you more pictures you can also ask about receipts, boxes if it comes in a full set and the condition. Well, it seems like most of the inventory are not with her, but she has uh, the bulk of the information. As a local buyer, I purchased my first Birkin, which is this Birkin in several color in ostrich leather from her. Well, Finkel Puff's prices are competitive and attractive, but I will emphasize that you should ask more questions about the bag you're interested in before purchase. For me, this bag was not locally sourced, so I was required to pay 1000 Singapore dollars deposit for her to ship the bag into Singapore, where she will then send a courier with the bag to my residence. Only upon receiving the bag in hand was I required to pay the remaining sum if the bag was acceptable to my standards. Otherwise, I would have lost the $1000 as a deposit. Of course, if you know me well, I do have quite a few pre-loved pieces so naturally I was more interested in areas of easy wear and tear and I asked for specific pictures of the corners of the bag where it is more crucial for an ostrich leather. The creasing on the sangles was important for me as well and um, as for the ostrich leather, I was new to this leather so I wanted to check out the darkening staining on the back on all the sides including the handles. I wanted to look at the condition of the quails which is all these little dots uh, you see here. Some pictures were not too clear so I had to ask for close up of certain quails I thought was rubbed off or peeling off. The interior of the bag seemed to be something quite difficult to capture but I had to put my trust in Steph's words on it. So after settling with the condition of the bag, I made, I, I made sure it came in the full set, which is the clochette, the case, lock and raincoat. Plus, it was for my birthday, I, speci I specifically asked Steph for an Hermes box for it. I wasn't sure if the ostrich leather came with CITES, but I asked anyway and Steph promised it would come with it. Well, my bag took a week to reach Singapore, where I was then contacted. Though I would have preferred to meet Finkel Puff at the place of her residence to view the bag in person, she insisted she courier it to me instead. Well, the local courier process was commendable as it was very prompt and flexible with the timing. 
I received the bag very late at night, about 11pm, and had a short time to check the bag and accept it while the courier waited around. So, um, of course, I scrutinized it very quickly, and of course, same like Danny, it was my first Birkin, uh, but in exotic leather, so I accepted the bag. Well, the bag came as expected in an Hermes paper bag in an Hermes box. She had the felt on the front as well with all the paper stuffings. Um, all the miscellaneous items were provided like the clochette, the key, the lock, the raincoat, including a photocopy of the CITES, which I was quite delighted to have. Now, the next day, I had more time to scrutinize the bag closely and this is when I noticed the part about the hardware over here and this bit in front, okay? So, it had stickers on but I noticed something wasn't quite right about it. I removed the stickers on the sangles and the main turn lock um, and to my horror, it was very, very badly scuffed. It was as if someone had dragged the hardware over a bitumen road, which was deeper than superficial scratches. At first, I thought I should let it slide. You know, after all, this bag cost about close to twenty thousand dollars, which is quite acceptably priced for an exotic Birkin. So I did not contact staff about it. But after sitting on it for a few days, I wasn't hundred percent contented with this floor, which wasn't this close to me initially. It was also my oversight that I forgot to ask for close-up pictures of the hardware to check on any scratches and its condition as I took her word for it that it was pristine. But anyhow, I mustered the courage to just text her about it, that it was that bad. Um, I sent her a few photos, a few videos, but then I was quite surprised at how she handled it. I would say Steph handled it really professionally she acknowledged the flaw and recommended I send it to a third party, one of her friends, who does touch-ups of Hermes hardware. In fact, I was quite touched and surprised it would be it can be fixed. So I contacted her friend who came to pick up the bag from my residence and promised to drop it back in about three to four days. After all, nothing to lose, right? The hardware was really kind of bad anyway. Steph also mentioned that she will cover the cost of repair for the hardware. It is quite commendable that Steph from Finkel Path is responsive and takes reasonable steps for a luxury experience for her customers as an online reseller for local buyers. Though I can't say how else it could be handled if this situation happened to an overseas buyer. Well, a bittersweet experience for me after all, though uh, now, the hardware is fixed and almost as good as new. I will try to show you um, probably a close-up of a video right after this. Um, I know it was once flawed, and, but that will never be the same for me. So basically, this is the hardware in close-up. It has already gone through the restoration. Um, quite shiny as you can tell um, but and the main plate here is also very back to shiny I guess if you really look closely at the turn lock you can still see let's see yeah can you see like still the scarves right on the edges here it's not 100% at its best but you know it was much worse than this before I'm not sure can you tell oh my god yeah, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit, it's not that easy to tell, especially when you're trying to focus. Yeah, so it's kind of scarfed. You can see the scuffings. And the other side of the hardware. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too fussy. This is just a bag. To me, it's just a bag. But, you know, it could have been nicer if there was um, good disclosure about it before I bought the bag. Alright, so probably this is as best as it can go right now. You can see like the surface is still kind of scarf, not at its best. Okay, alright. 
some lessons learned for me and for my fellow viewers who will potentially be splurging large sums of money on their first Hermes bag via online platforms, I will give you some tips from my experience. Number one, money matters. So usually with online resellers, prices of bags seem to be quite secretive. So often you will find it listed as dollar sign one x x x x. Ask the seller the exact price and any other miscellaneous costs involved for shipment, etc. because money matters. When buying large ticket items into the tens or twenty thousands to the sellers, these are small change. But as buyers, these are our, our hard-earned money and we want to know the exact costs involved before the sale. Number two, pictures. Always ask for more photos of the bag. Usually, these sellers will provide a set of photos, but as the consumer, you are not limited to only those photos. Ask for more if you need more. Look at the corners in detail. Don't be afraid to ask for clearer pictures if you're unsure. If you need specific angles of the bag because you saw something fuzzy or faint, just ask for more pictures. Also, if the color of the bag is like a chameleon, Ask for good quality photos under good sunlight and not in a dimly lit room because the colour of the bag can change, can turn out to be totally different. Um, and of course, in my case, I have learned my lesson. Ask for pictures of the hardware if it will bother you. Look at it from a few different angles for scratches, tarnish, etc. I know it may seem a lot, but if you're parting with a significant amount of money, I think as a consumer, it's good to do your due diligence before confirming the sale. Point number three are accessories. Accessories pre present or missing can play a huge role in the price of the bag. Ask to look at the accessories for scarves, stains or scratches. Miscellaneous items like raincoat, cap booklet and the felt thing is not so crucial as those can be repurchased, same like an Hermes box and the Hermes dust bag. However, go with your priorities and what you deem acceptable in the sale. Number four would be documents. Like original Hermes receipts can sometimes come with the bag or even Hermes spa receipts. Also for exotic leathers, do ask for the CITES certificate if there is, because that will be so much more helpful in bringing this bag overseas for use. Finkelpath does have her own receipt of the sale from her if you ask for it. And number five, any previous touch-ups. Another important point is to ask the reseller if the bag has had any previous touch-ups before, colour restorations, recoloration, and by whom because if done by a third party, the bag cannot be sent back to Hermes for restoration and that may be a deciding factor in whether you should even purchase the bag or not. Well, these are a few tips I have and lessons learned from buying pre-love via an online platform. I hope you enjoyed today's session and collaboration with Danny and hopefully it doesn't 100% turn you off from buying pre-love altogether. If given a chance, I always ask to see the bag in person, which means I prefer to see it at a brick and mortar boutique and to examine the bag in person, carry it around, test it around, you know, just look at it. Thank you for joining me today in today's session and do leave me any questions you have. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you find my videos useful and of course leave some love and hit that bell for early updates whenever I upload. I cannot wait to check out what Danny has for us, so do head over to her video right here. Take care and see you queens. Goodbye!